Did you have fun last night with the trick-or-treaters? No, I didn't. Well, some of you uh, know that I, we were uh, out of our home because it was burned by three stooges. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator of Conversations and Coffee. And I named them the Three Stooges. And I shared with you that our pastor said, you can name them a lot worse. Uh, but I've had a lot of fun, and guess what my husband got yesterday? Trick or treat. He got a DVD of the old three okay. students. <laughs> what a great way to spend All Hallows Eve. It was wonderful. Uh, so, back in our home, meeting and greeting trick or treaters, including the three students by film. So, here we are celebrating. Uh, at the same time, we are in a time of grief in our country, particularly in Pittsburgh with the members of the Tree of Life Synagogue and 11 who were massacred and many people in terrible grief. Uh, and in recent conversation with the rabbi of Hillel at OSU, um, we've united in thought and prayer. And I thought it would be good to take a moment of silence to be with the people who have suffered so and with our whole community here in Columbus. Um, let's take that moment. And to move from the grief to a moment of celebration. You were in here, I believe, some of you, when we mentioned that Jeff Martin, our beloved administrator, <laughs> received, Jeff, we all come forward, the Greater Columbus Arts Council Award for Emerging Art Leaders. Isn't that marvelous? And, you know, I shared with him, I know what it's like to be an administrator. I've been an administrator. And I tell you, it never ends, does it, Jeff? <laughs> There's always more to But his humor, his presence, isn't it extraordinary? And it takes something of, um, I think that's the, mm, you know, the word transparency is very popular these days. Uh, but I think about the transparency, that's the secret, is humor. <laughs> you just see through things. Don't you agree, Todd? I agree. Ah, and Todd is the assistant administrator, so he would know, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, I can, and I, I want to mention something real quick too. We, we, uh, the, the, uh, there were a number of awardees at uh, the GCAC's uh, awards banquet that they have. There's an artist educator award that they give out and an arts partner award. And they asked um, an artist in town here to, to create a uh, painting for each of the, um, the awardees. And so I actually got, um, I received a really lovely painting of the Cultural Arts Center, oh, which was really cool. And I wish I would have thought to have it today. I didn't know we were going to do this today. But I, I, maybe I'll bring it next week and uh, show it, but it's a really nice depiction of it. And, uh, and I thought, oh, this is really lovely. This is perfect. And I was leaving the, um, the ceremony, uh, and speaking of humor, I saw one of my friends from the symphony who works at the symphony, and I said, hey, can I see what, look what I got? And he said, oh, he said, that's great. You got uh, a painting of the place you go to work every day. <laughs> and I thought, oh, yeah, that is. <laughs> So, but it's really lovely, and I, I'll, I'll have to bring it to share with everybody. Show, show that off. Well, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, sure. Thanks for mentioning it. Thank you. Head, come forward. 
this is where we are viewed better here. Oh, okay. Yes. Should I bring my coffee? Well, well why not? Why not? Sure. Bring your coffee. Now we notice, is that our coffee? Is that your coffee? And this is well, you'll my have coffee. to fill it up. Tim Horton, a little bit of competition here. Yeah, a little bit of competition. Uh, brewed by Inga Smith today. So she will uh, give you your second cup there. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Ted Dragich has an amazing story. When he was three years old, he came from Yugoslavia, Eastern Europe, with his family and always viewing his father working, working, constructing, creating. And when he went to school, he shared with me, they teased him about his name, Head Dragon. But then, how did you say it? They teased me, they teased me because my name was Pedra. Dragic. So kids had troubles rolling their R's and they couldn't say Predrag. Nice and loud there. They could not say Predrag. They would say Pred uh, Predrick is what they called me. And I changed it. I changed it to Ped just to make it short for everybody. Make it easier on everybody else. Unfortunately, to this day people say Ped. No, Ted. No, it's Ped, like no Ped. Yeah, that's good. And Ped being in Latin, foot. Yes. Yeah, so you had quite a journey, huh? And in school, so when he was, we could say kind of borderline, we call it boy a bit, huh? Yes. Uh, you created in a forest. A tree house. A tree house. And what, yes. were, you, what were you doing here? So, of course, uh, having troubles making friends, obviously because of my name. I'm from a different country and I didn't speak English. Um, I found myself in the woods, climbing trees, and I would literally fall asleep in a tree for an hour or two and just sit there and think about life and where it's taken me. Um, but as I started learning a little bit more and more in construction with my father, I started taking scraps of wood that I would find in dumpsters and I built myself a little clubhouse and I would climb in that tree every day and that's where I would sit with my dog and I would draw. It was the best thing I could do just to have fun because obviously I wasn't running around with the rest of the kids so that's what I found myself doing it's in a tree drawing. Amazing and so as you were working with your father as time went on, yes. in the construction company, you then, with your brother, worked for your father. Yes. You always had this artistic part of you, thinking, creating, waving your canvases. Yes. Um, so tell us how that all evolved and how, as you were saying, um, the tile work called you. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, learning the construction industry and walking into million dollar homes, I was able to see a lot of different things that I've never seen in my life. Um, if you've ever been to Europe, all the houses are made out of plaster. It's like clay block is what they're constructed of and concrete. And plaster and so having cracks in the walls that's just character that's just old world that's just to be expected um, but you know going to these houses here and seeing the great architecture and out of wood something that we would normally not see overseas um, kind of gave me how do you say a different light something to look at a little differently and um, as an artist I had a creative mind and just looking at the way people were building houses, the way they were constructing staircases and things, that kind of inspired me into creating something for myself. And at the time, people were asking me to design their showers in their million dollar homes. And as an artist, I had to draw mine. 
I had to draw mine. I, I, I had to make, think of something that I would want to have one day that no other person in town would have as far as a shower. So I started drawing it over and over and over again. And um, it wasn't until 2006 when I was fortunate enough to build my own home, uh, I constructed the shower. I actually built the house out around the shower. And um, the, uh, the shower is round. Um, I did bring uh, a picture on my slideshow so everybody can see the shower. Uh, and uh, just standing in that shower every day, just looking at the shower, um, kind of gave me an idea. I mean, I constructed it, I designed it, I looked at it every day. Why can't I make a canvas that kind of looks like the shower? And so that's what I started doing. I started constructing my first piece. And funny, it broke overnight. So. I went to bed all excited the next morning that I'm going to get to see this piece and get to work on it again. And uh, because of the cold weather and the materials that I was using, it, uh, the tension of the wood, it just broke overnight. So I was back to square one. Again. And um, 10 prototypes later, I was able to come up with a block that's within the piece within every single one of these pieces, I able to come up with a uh, a block, a block that is lightweight. But uh, I'm going to pass this around. It actually has uh, a weight on it, so this block that I created is half the weight of standard wood that you would find in every canvas that you buy. So I mean, a lot of canvases right now are made out of poplar, they're made out of pine, and um, my, my block actually has seven individual pieces within that block to create it, to create something that's strong, uh, very lightweight and durable, um, and makes the canvas lightweight. So, uh, alongside with a good few more, we say, puzzle pieces, uh, I was able to create a canvas. Uh, for example, this piece, I call this the WC2, uh, for Wavy Canvas 2. And this piece is less than three pounds in weight. And I'm sure you're probably gonna probably can't see this, but it's strong enough for me to stand on. Um, and so my biggest, I guess, how do you say, hurdle was once I started doing art, it was really oils on small canvases. And we all know how much oils cost, especially back in the 80s. It was expensive, and I wanted to go bigger. I wanted to paint bigger, and oils was not the solution. I had to go to acrylic, and once I started going to acrylic, I wanted to put more texture, more depth into my pieces. Um, so I started using plasters and paints and uh, sawdust, glues, chips of glue, chips of wood, and I would put that in my canvases. But then, I'm sure you all know that the more media that you put on your canvas, the more sag, the more it's going to become wavy, or sometimes wrinkly, depending on how that canvas was constructed. And so I started thinking, if I'm making these huge canvases, how can I put my texture, all that stuff, onto the canvas and not have it wrinkly? And so, of course, that was another thing I started thinking about when I started creating this this canvas. My slideshow? Yeah. Sure. I wanted to ask you on that thing that just went around. Do you cover that wood with paper? What is that? The piece that the piece that I am that I'm passing around. Believe it or not, um, I covered it with paper, 
because I don't want everybody to see my secret sauce. So normally, if you were to take one of these apart, then you would really see how I've constructed it. But the, the actual block is made of seven individual puzzle pieces that make that one piece. And then that piece, or one of those blocks, for example, this block would have five, or actually I take it back, four. Two on the sides, two here, and then the one solid piece of wood would be right here in the middle. And that's how you would attach this piece to a wall. And you'll see in the slideshow that there's many different ways that you can hang my canvases. Um, for example, the piece that you see here, if you like this side, then you can hang it going outward from the wall. Or, if you like this side, you can hang it on the wall going outward. And so, with the solid piece of block blocking in the middle, yes, you will have a hole. It's okay. I think just a, we're all artists here. We can always dabble a little dot of glue, or I'm sorry, paint and put it back into that little hole, but you screw a screw in the middle of this and then just attach a wire and the canvas literally just sits right on the wall with no problem. The, the part that I really enjoyed the most was having it go into an inside corner. So again, same thing, you put the screw on the back side in the middle and and just drive the screw into the inside corner, which we all know there is a stud there. And it's just a little piece of wire and the piece just hangs by itself. Um, I did want to say they're, that... They're not really as heavy as they look like they would be. No, they're not. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I think that we've all bought canvases that are about the same size. And apples to apples comparison, yes, I would probably say that, that the canvas that you buy at the store is probably lighter in weight. But um, I think what's... But this isn't nearly as heavy as you would think it does, just no. looking at it. And yeah. I'm, I'm willing to okay. put it here so you can kind of feel the weight. Um, yeah. That piece... That actual piece right there was the first one that I made suspending it on strings. So I put a block of wood, a block of wood on either end with uh, three screws on each side and then four strings. And then I started pouring paint on it and I just started flipping it. So I was able to, to get paint on this side was also able to get paint on this side in a continuous run, so there is no stopping point on the paint. It just continues to go and go. And how, and then, how do you manage that? Like when you're drizzling the paint on and it's running, you put um, Usually I'll pour the paint in the different colors and then I sit there and I dance with the painting <laughs> for you know three or four hours and I just keep moving it and moving it until I'm satisfied with it. And then at that point, I start to dry it. Do you do both sides at the same setting? Both sides, yep, yeah, at the same time. Yes. Um, this piece here is kind of what I was doing before on flat canvases. So if you can only imagine, OK, so when you look at this, you think about, uh, oh, that's a tile man's trowel. Yeah, it is. 35 years of doing tile, I might as well use a tool that I know how to play with, right? So I started putting that on there, but it was kind of hard. So what I did was I left this side, this one. And it's crazy because on social media, everybody loves this side more, you know? But uh, yeah, so I, I only did one side. And you have the, that's why I always say, with this canvas, you can, how do you say, uh, if, if you do have a canvas, then you can, you can paint 
one side one way, paint the other one the other way, and then you choose the way you want to hang it on the wall. So, and the next thing I'm thinking about doing is I want to start using it as a centerpiece, like a sculpture. That you can walk around and see all. Or hang the ceiling in the room device. Correct. Correct. So I think Speaking what I'm. brush strokes at that point. Uh -huh. Is that the airport? Yes. Brush strokes uh -huh. floor so what I'm thinking is, is probably to start creating a new platform oh, that is yeah. that is all with canvas. So as the paint drips down onto the onto that pedestal that form that I'm going to make, it's all going to be out of canvas, and then I can just slip the canvas into it, and it all matches the same colors. I think that's probably where all, as far as an artist goes, that's what I'm going to try to do. Yes. How long does it typically take you to make or construct one piece? Okay, that's a great question. Um, this is honestly speaking. One piece takes me literally four days to make. So the first part of this whole thing is the block. So the block is a process. I start to make the block. Then I have to create the top and bottom plates. And that all has to go through a drying stage. And then once that dries, uh, this is the interesting part. If you feel, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass one around so everybody can feel it and, and, and the flexibility of the canvas. Um, what we were able to find was, or what I was able to find through friends and connections, is uh, like a laminate flooring. There's a synthetic laminate that I was able to get that's very durable uh, but flexible, and I actually cover the framework with it. And then I glue my canvas onto it. And um, as everybody knows, I mean, back in the day when we used to paint, uh, the, the canvases used to have this, the bars, right? And as you would paint that bar, the, the, the paint would be funny on that bar. And it's like, oh my god, now the bar, or the bar is behind the canvas, so it doesn't actually touch now. But before, it was it was a problem, uh, and so. But but if you feel the canvas it, nowadays, people want a stronger surface that they can actually paint on. They don't want that much of a flexibility into the canvas, and so that was kind of the whole goal: is to make it lightweight, to make it strong, durable, but also give the artist the opportunity to paint all sides of the canvas. Do you buy your canvas on big rolls? Yes, ma'am, I do. I buy it in huge rolls, and then of course I cut it up and, and, and we put it on the, on the frames itself. And it does take four days. Yes, sir? Um, so how, I don't know how long you've been creating these, but how long do you think it, it would like last? Because you know when you take things to a gallery or a museum, they want something that will last you know, lifetimes. So this is honestly speaking, my first 13 prototypes that I made, I put them through hell. Uh, I literally put them up in my attic in the middle of summer and just let them cook. And I did find that the glues that I was using previously on my first prototypes uh, was making the canvas shrink. And so I, I found that to be one problem. Uh, have, they, have I gotten wet? Yeah, absolutely. I've taken a hose and gone completely over top of them. Um, but through trial and error, oh, and going through 23 different types of glue and manufacturers, uh, I was able to find a local uh, manufacturing plant here, down in Columbus, which doesn't sell to the public. You have to go to a uh, distributor to buy the glue. I was able to finally find a glue that was strong, and, uh, and I tested it by putting it in an attic, by pouring water all over it dumping as much paint as you could ever imagine on the canvas, and uh, they're holding up very well. So yeah, I mean, as far as the testing goes, uh, in all honesty, I've probably gone through about 30 or 40 pieces just destroying them. Just making them, figuring out what's wrong with them, testing them. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is, uh, I don't know if, uh, does, when you guys paint, do you ever use like blue tape and put it on your, painting and then you paint and then you pull the tape and then so you use one of these to cut? How many times have you cut through the canvas? Many? Never cut through this. 
And you can solve one cutting into it, but it's not going to come apart. Yes, the cut is there, and sure, you could probably put a little bit of gesso or something over it, a little bit of white paint to cover it, but the great part about it is, is you'll never have to worry about cutting through the tape and into the canvas. Helen, is it okay? All right, go ahead sure. start.
Uh, there was two of them that were three floors up. Uh, I want to say that the, the owner had paid probably about $40,000 per staircase. And it was all done by the Amish. All out of, um, it was all done out of Luan. Pieces and pieces and pieces glued and glued together. And just by looking at that, and I started thinking, whoa, hold on a second, we could do something here. So I created, oh, yeah. Todd was an art, but not the art I wanted to do. <laughs> Dreaming of the shower I always wanted and restarting where I left off with my art. In 2007, I was finally able to stand into the shower I had always wanted and started dreaming again. Combining what I had learned over the years in construction industry and the passion I had for art brought me to an idea of a new canvas. My inspiration for the way the canvas is right. So this, this shower has 300 square feet of hand-cut limestone tile inside and out of it. Um, the floor was heated, so there's a heated flooring system in the floor as well as the rest of the bathroom. Uh, and it weighed a lot. I mean, so much that I had to put a, an extra micro lamb to hold the weight of the shower. First prototype failed and broke overnight. Cold conditions and using the wrong material along with generic adhesives were a sign of a long journey ahead. Ten prototypes later and many changes to the construction of the frame to make it lighter in weight. The durable was the goal. So you can see that, that canvas, that's kind of the way I make these canvases, but totally different material now. Um, and this was a very big piece that I made, and sadly, yes, it did break. Uh, the first frames I made were made from heavier construction material, and with much thought and trial and error, the super block was born. This new piece of the puzzle enabled me to make the interior working of the frame lighter in weight than standard wood, but just as strong. The main inner working parts of the frame was made out of a combination of patent pending component, components that are lightweight and hold seven individual puzzle pieces within to make the structure of the frame very strong. Which I don't have this in here, but just so everybody knows, there's actually 14 pieces, individual pieces, that go into one canvas and four days to make. And they are all, all handmade. Uh, the outer construction of the canvas was covered with a flexible but durable skin made of an integrated synthetic laminate and covered with 100% cotton canvas. So Wavy Canvas is the first of its kind patent pending canvas that is handmade by one of a kind lightweight material, consistent in strength and very durable. The surface is flat, smooth, and slightly flexible, ensure no bars or framework to contend with. Each canvas is completely covered on all six sides with 100% cotton canvas. Reversible and allows to, be, allows to be painted on all six sides of the canvas, primed and ready to paint. Wavy Canvas is also the first in the industry with the capabilities of being able to hang into an inside corner, flat wall, horizontally or vertically, and very easy to attach to a wall. So the first successful canvas was named the M1, named after I painted the Macedonian flag. And of course, my mother from Macedonia. My father-in-law is the priest of the Macedonian church here in Columbus. Uh, out of respect, yeah, I had to paint this one first. And then I did the Russian flag out of the M1. And then I did these that show the piece hanging, bowing outward. So all canvas frames can be hung bowing inward or outward. Both sides are covered with canvas and allows the artist to paint two paintings on one canvas frame or continue the painting to the back side. One screw in the frame one screw in the wall, and a piece of wire holds the entire piece with no problem. That piece I brought in today. Both sides. The F1 was a new template, a new idea, a little interesting. So I started to play with it, and I came up with this. 
The F1 and random patterns inspired me to make something new. So I decided to make the American flag by combining numerous pieces to make one piece of artwork. The finished product when the pieces were put together. 14 individual canvases, canvas frames were used in the design to make this 5 by 7 flag. Yes, sir. So I'm assuming you tried different kinds of paints and so, so do with like oil paint, acrylic, spray paints, do all those different materials are here appear to it? Well, it's it's basically the canvas that you paint on every day is exactly the same thing. There's no difference. Uh, uh, just like the the canvases that we do buy at Michaels or you know the Blick art stores. Um, they're buying it in rolls, so they're really just cutting them to a certain size. And if anybody's ever really looked on, uh, you know, YouTube, you'll you'll see that the canvas that you buy really only is worth about seven dollars. They are the frames come in, they throw the canvas over top of it, and then they have a ten thousand dollar canvas master machine that hydraulically pulls it, stretches it, and then they just use a staple gun. Bah, 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 they throw it in a piece of plastic casing, a little piece of paper that says uh, the description of the name of the company, and that's it. So I mean, the canvas that you buy is basically the same as what I have. The only difference is, is mine is handmade, and yeah, it probably cost me about $100 to make myself. Um, and I do have guys that work with me, um, but it's the same canvas. So you would recommend like um, gesso in it or preparing it? It's primed, ready to go. So, I mean, it's primed with uh, a very good primer. Uh, if you want to put gesso on it, you're more than welcome to. I have, uh, and I have spray painted over it. I've thrown um, stain. Uh, I've thrown all kinds of stuff on the paintings. Yes, most of them I just pretty much destroyed or peeled the canvas off and re-canvassed it off again, which was a struggle because the canvas sticks to that, that integrated laminate so well that it's, it's, it's very difficult to pull it, pull it apart. But, yeah, I've done uh, a lot of different tests on it to make it what I would expect artists to do with it. Now, don't get me wrong, if you leave it in a mildew in your room or if you put it in an attic for three hours, yeah, I mean, probably something may happen. So the WC2, uh, less than three pounds in weight, the WC2 frame is strong enough to hold the weight of a man standing on it. The frame can be hung many different ways by using only one nail in some situations. So I kind of was experimenting and putting these little WC2s on the wall and uh, I've had quite a, few, quite a few people buy those because now they're hanging them. Um, believe it or not, they're hanging them. They're hanging them. Like this. And then they'll put a candle on it. So they'll paint it. And then they'll put a candle on it. They'll put something on it. And so uh, I had one lady, she sent me a picture. She actually took a canvas, flat canvas, and then she glued this one to it. And then basically what she did was is she had the mountains and the, the trees, and then she had the waterfall, and she actually had the waterfall coming down in front of the canvas. Wow. So yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. So the WC1 was the first one that I really liked because it was, and it's the one that I showed you with all my texture on it. Uh, it's, it, it reminds me of just the canvases that we normally paint on. Well, I mean, we have the smaller ones, but the one that's normally like a two by three canvas. And I uh, had fun with this one. So I painted the German flag right before the World Cup. <laughs> And thinking, you know, Germany obviously is going to go, right? To my surprise, they didn't. Uh, this one was, I don't do illusion type paintings. Uh, mine was more or less, you know, uh, European settings, cafes, mountains, uh, oceans, things like that. That's what I really loved. And then, of course, moving into abstract with a lot of texture. And this one I wanted to create so that uh, people that did paint in illusion could see that um, 
this could really bring more three-dimensional depth to their work. And um, I don't know if the picture does uh, any justice, but when I stand in front of this piece in my studio, it really does pull me in. Uh, France, yes, they're the ones that want it. And I had to make one of them too. So this canvas is hung uh, two different ways. And you could actually hang this in an inside corner if you like. And then I come up with a mini wave, which is one of my favorites. And they all come six inches, 12 inches, 18, 24, and now I'm getting ready to introduce a 48 inch wide. Uh, this is another painting that I did on an on a M1, uh, 24 by 30, it's actually a 24 by 44 inch. It has 74 different colors in it. And um, I've never done a painting like this in my life, but I had I had so much fun doing it though. And this is what it looked like after I put the other two pieces together. at least I'm intrigued with as an artist is how much shadowing it, this, this wave gives this canvas. Depending on the light, the, the shadow on the wall really starts to move and really makes it look different. Me and my daughter had to count all the colors on this one. And I think she and I finally came up with 93 different colors. And again, a painting that I've never done before. So this is what I started doing. I attached two pieces of wood to the ends, four strings, and then I just started to flip my canvases to, to get that paint to go all the way around the painting. Suspended by strings, I was able to move the paint all the way around the entire frame and continuous blend of colors with no stopping point. I brought that painting as well today. By the way, I'm having loads of fun pouring paint on a canvas, even though that's not my style. I'm having loads of fun and so much waste of paint. So <laughs> so same canvases, um, two different sizes, or same canvas but you know two different painters on the same canvas. And here's my last photo. Oh. Because if a war ever arose, they would 
know the territory. Obviously, you know that you're a little town of Mostar in Bosnia. You know the mountains, you, you, you hiked it all the time. But to go down to Macedonia and hike those hills, so what they did was they moved these soldiers from, you know, uh, city to city, country to, you know, uh, well now it's, it's six different republics, is what Yugoslavia is made up of. So this capital is still Belgrade. Belgrade. Very and, good, and that's I, what I needed to know. Yeah. Uh, so you have Bosnia and Herzegovina, you have um, Macedonia, you have Slovenia, you have Serbia, you have Croatia, Oh my God, I'm missing one. Uh, <laughs> Montenegro, thank you so very much. And, sorry? So I love Montenegro. Montenegro is beautiful. I've been to Split, I've been to Dubrovnik, I went all the way up into the Adriatic Sea and saw Pula, and spent 16 days in the Rovine, which uh, I think on one of my pictures there was uh, the, the European setting was of the Rovine. That was kind of what really inspired me. But yeah, I've gone all the way from Macedonia all the way up to the top and traveled it. Been to Poland and Czechoslovakia. And, and uh, some of the stories I could tell you just, oof. especially when Yugoslavia was, uh, uh, do you remember when the war of Kosovo? Crisis in Kosovo. Um, what they did was they, they did not allow any goods to come into Serbia. None. In or out. And I, at the time, I was in Romania with my cousin, and he put me on a train. He said, okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going back to Belgrade. And, which by the way, I'm by trilingual, I can speak fluently Serbian and Macedonian. Um, but as he put me on this train, and we were in the last cart, I, we started leaving, and everybody just seems really antsy on, on, on the train. And once we went through the border, you could just see this mad race. Everybody was grabbing their bags. They were taking screws out of the panels of the window, right below the window. So if you've ever been on a European train, the hallway is this narrow, okay? And then on one side is where you have your beds. And then right there in that hallway, you just have the window. And they were unscrewing all those panels below the windows and shoving Shirts, pants, socks, shoes, everything you can imagine inside that framing, that little cavity. And then we're going to go in through the next border, and sure enough, the border control would walk in and with machine guns and everything, and they were asking for your passports. They were asking, what are you declaring? What do you have? What are you bringing? And, um, I won't lie with you, I lied to you, I had three huge duffel bags, huge. And I gave them my American passport, and they were Serbian army, and I brought my bags down, and the one guy said to the lady, he says, oh, this guy is definitely, he's going to be selling this stuff in Belgrade, in the mass, it's, it's like, we, um, what do they call it, it's a buvdak, is what it's called. But, Basically, where all these people come and they sell whatever they can to whoever needs it. I mean, they were mixing water with gas and selling it on the roads. And uh, so the one soldier says to the other, oh yeah, this guy is going to be selling in downtown Belgrade. And she says, yeah, I think you're right. And I looked at the both of them and I said, no, Mr. B. Correctly, nigo Yasum Americanitz. That's what I said to him. And I said, no, you're wrong. I'm an American. And they're like, well, why so many clothes? And I said, I'm like a woman. I like to <laughs> change my clothes maybe once or twice or three times a day. And uh, the lady looked at me and she goes, you're right. And she gave me the passport and I, I went on my way. And sure enough, when we got there, you could see people were just giving to the people that were there and they would turn around and go back and do it again. And that's what they were doing. But the things that I've seen in uh, Yugoslavia uh, as a little boy and throughout my life, uh, believe it or not, I don't normally tell too many people this, and hopefully you're not going to put this on TV. No, go ahead. Don't put this on TV. I, uh, <laughs> I, I went to Serbia in, uh, in last December. And um, I went to go see my cousin 
but really I went to go to go get my teeth fixed. So yeah, they're all gleaming white, like Hollywood's, you know, uh, movie stars. But uh, my dentist told me it was going to cost twenty-two thousand dollars to have all my teeth fixed, and uh, I told him forget it. So I went overseas, and yeah, um, titanium with six layers of porcelain for twenty-five hundred bucks. And I went, and I had a great time with my cousins, my relatives. I went to go watch. Uh, uh, Red Star and Partizan, which is the two biggest rivals uh, in Serbia. One is on one side of the Danube River, one's on the other side of the Danube River. I got to watch that game live. If you go on my Facebook page, you can actually see some clipping of uh, what I posted. Uh, but it was a wonderful, wonderful time. I love my country. Um, sad what happened throughout the war. Um, it really was. It was really sad. But, uh, the whole Macedonian community, if you know anybody that's Macedonian, trust me, they all know me. They know me by Dragan. That's my, that's what people call me in Europe, European friends. But um, it's, it's, it's uh, I'm glad I'm, I'm here you know, in Columbus, Ohio. Let's put it that way. It's, it's well, done really well. You've come to Columbus as such. You lived on Parsons Avenue? And in a duplex with my grandmother. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. And started at the age of eight, I'm handing my dad tools. I had to learn. I mean, I had no choice in the matter. My father, my father was a, an electrical engineer by trade. Um, he came here and started working with Jess Howard Electrical Company. I wish I would have been able to say that a lot better in, in the interview, by the way. We could redo some. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then he moved off and, and connected with Wendy's Corporate. Uh, my dad was the first man to put the first salad bar into a Wendy's restaurant. <laughs> oh. Uh, and then we started doing the solariums, and then we moved from that into, you know, the facial panels around the Wendy's restaurants, the old, remember the copper? Um, it's just, it's just... How long did you grandmother been in the States before you came? My, my grandfather, her husband, died when I was probably about nine months old. And my grandmother was really falling apart. She, she just, just couldn't be around anything anymore. And so um, through the Macedonian church, uh, they brought her here. Uh, and my grandmother, of course, she had to go through the whole process of uh, the citizenship, applying for citizenship. Uh, and through the community, she was able to meet a really nice man and, uh, that had a house down on Hinman off of Parsons. And uh, they lived in that house. And um, after a few years, my grandmother reached out to my father and said, you know, there's great opportunity here. You should come. My father came under a tourist's visa. And um, he brought us here, uh, my mother my, and my, or me and my mother. And uh, we stayed here for a little bit. And then they told us to go back. And I had to go back, or we had to go back for two years while that citizenship paper application was being filed or going through the process. And then again, back at five, we came here. And so that's kind of how that all came about. And I give my dad a lot of credit because he really did. He came with 17 bucks in his pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has really done a wonderful, I mean, back in you know late 70s, he was making probably more than the president of the United States at the time. Uh, he, he was working so hard and he had a great crew of guys that uh, the other companies that were out there doing these Wendy's remodels, they were taking three weeks and my dad was only taking 12 days to, to finish the project. So they were giving him bonuses and bonuses. And, and with those bonuses came along uh, with, uh, hey, we're going on vacation. And our vacations was, yeah, he sent us home uh, to the old country for three months. And it didn't cost us me anything, I mean, besides the plane ticket, because he lived with grandma. He stayed with grandma. He stayed with cousins. And uh, I mean... Food, yeah, bread, uh, feta cheese, and tomato. That's all you really needed. You know, a little bit of paprika, that was it. But uh, yeah, it was, it was it was a really great journey. And then, it, and then at the age of 13 was the last time that he sent me. And two years passed, and of course I was longing to go back again, so I raised enough money myself, and I went back and uh, by myself and traveled and went back at 17, and then went back at 20, and. And then a long period went uh, from, I think it was 
The last time I went was in, when I was 22 years old. So now I'm 50. So I was 49. That's how long it's been since I went back. And so now I want to take the girls to go see it. It's a beautiful country, by the way. Yes. Quick question about um, the canvases again. Have yes. You, have you ever done, or would you do like uh, angular canvases? I guess that would like affect the name. Um. Yes. I am. I am now. I am wanting to do a, a piece like this, but twisted. So yes, it sits on the wall, maybe on two sides, but then I want it to be twisted, so it's more of a twisted, twisted piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can, and I can do it. I can achieve it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Have I? Done it? No, I haven't. But can I or will I? Yes. I, I, I mean, in life, uh, there's only I believe in really there's only two things that we really can't do physically. One is fly and lift up a house. It's really the only two things that I think that we really can't do. So saying that, I think that anything is truly possible if you really put your mind to it. So yes, I'm going to attempt it, for sure. Do you think your daughter's going to follow any of this wonderful uh, Lauren wants to be a doctor. Uh -huh. That's why she's going to Ohio State. Uh, I played, uh, believe it or not, I, I played football. I was a running back. Um, I played baseball as a center fielder. I played basketball as a point guard. Where? I, I, I'm sorry? Where? Football, I played for the Eastland Vikings when I was a little kid from the east side, if anybody knows the Eastland Vikings. Uh, in basketball, I played for my military school. Um, in baseball, I played for Shady Lane off of Livingston. Um, and then uh, I swam for my military school. Uh, and I was one of those guys that would do the, you know, the clips and stuff and get my own scores. But um, I totally lost where I was on my daughters. Yes. <laughs> but I did play soccer all my life and I did play professionally here at Columbus for the Columbus Invaders, professional indoor team. And uh, as little girls, I would chase them around the house and play soccer with them all the time. And so both of my kids played soccer all of their life. Uh, and at a high level, we're not talking about rec. They, they played a high level. Uh, believe it or not, right now, uh, Pickerington North High School is playing this Saturday uh, against Watterson at Dublin Jerome High School to go to the Final Four. Ooh. And my daughter's on the team. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Ted. Yes. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. But before I end this, I have something very important I want to do. If that's okay with you. Okay. First, I would like for you to come. Uh, did everybody write their name on this card? On the yes. card? Yes. Uh, so, Ellen, I want you to come up. And I'm going to shuffle these cards. And I want you to pick one card out of the stack. And we'll still like be doing the cards. Right? You pick whatever card you like. Okay. Okay. Can you, read, can you please read the name? It's Donald Dion. Oh, yeah. There you go. So I brought, and I'm going to. That can help you if you'd like, or you can just carry it out this way. I brought you a piece. Oh. Wow. Well, this piece right here that I have brought, um, this one I had posted on my social media pages. I'm going to give this one away to one individual here in the United States as a Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way to be entered into my little Christmas gift is either a share, a like, or a comment on my Facebook page or Wavy Canvas' uh, uh, page. and. Uh, December, I'm sorry, yes, December 15th will be the last day I will take, and then I will do a live draw, uh, which is going to be real. You have to reside in the United States because this product cannot go out of the United States, <laughs> and I'm going to give it away as a, uh, as a gift. 
But um, as a token of my appreciation, I'm asking all of you to help me here today. And let me know what piece you really like, besides that one. What one, which one do you truly like the most, so I know what I need to do? So, a show of hands. Um, Is this one? Really good we see? No, no, yes, only the we'll ones see. that we have here. Okay. So, if you like this one, if you like this one, give me a show of hands. If it's this one here, or this one here, that one, this one, or this one. I, 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 I would really like to know which one you all find most interesting because what I'm going to do next I think is really important to me uh, and it just really helps me understand that everybody else is seeing the same thing. So, you want to think about it just for a second and let me know which one you all like the most. The one right there, the horizontal one. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll, I'm just going to do this. Uh, a show of hands. A show of hands, please, on, on this one. Yes, one. I like the shape. Okay, so uh, the one that's here behind me with the new texture. Okay, one. Okay. Oh, you love the bag. Yes, I know. I love that. I know, I know. Uh, this one here. Yes, two, three, four. Yes, this one here. You like the bag, so okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn it around just, to, just so we can. It. Yeah, I have to talk okay. with you. Ari yes? after this. So I think this is so far. This one right here is the one that you like so far. Okay. So can we just skip that? Say it okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I want okay, to. I'm, I'm still anxious, you know, you know to uh, get to uh, Ed. Yeah, he said, he said, you know, a holiday cannot help. Not a problem. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, I see. Thank you so much. Okay. As a token of my appreciation, I want to donate this piece to the Culture Arts Center. And, uh, okay, okay. Okay. And thank Emily O'Shaughnessy and her board members for inviting me here today to talk in the conversation. Thank you.